introducing the Daredevils of Hollywood. Come on, come on. Time's a-wasting. Let's get this shot and then we're all through. Hey, the motorboats are all set, Mr. Richfield. That's good, Tommy. Do the drivers know exactly what to do? Yes, sir. They're supposed to be coming at full speed and then the big boat crashes into the little one. Is that right? That's right. And I only hope we get it on the first take. Oh, say, I don't think those boys will mess up the shot. You know, they're both good stuntmen. Well, let's go. All right, quiet, everybody. Quiet. This is the shot. Okay, start grinding. Signal the boat. Keep those spotlights on them. That looks like a million bucks so far. Watch it now. There it is. From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes. Those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions. Whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death. Those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth. The Suicide Squad. The movie stuntmen. The Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in bringing you this copyrighted radio feature, it is again our privilege to have as our guest the charming stunt girl of the movies, Miss Ione Reed. We have all enjoyed her visits before, and we know that again she has a real thrill in store for us. It is through her cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of her dangerous profession. And the thrilling scenes you are about to hear are her own actual experiences. Miss Reed is here in the studio right now, and later in the program, we will bring her to the microphone. But first, let us dramatize for you some of her thrilling experiences. It is a bright, hot summer day in 1928. The scene is a Southern California freight yard. The air is filled with faint sounds of locomotives lazily puffing their answer to the switchman's call. Here a motion picture company has set up location. Dressing rooms and other equipment, large lights, cameras and reflectors add a bizarre touch to the otherwise colorless and grimy locale. Inside a hastily erected canvas dressing room, we find Ione Reed executing the final touches to her makeup. A colored maid is assisting. Lordy, lordy, honey. I'll sure be glad when this here thing's over. I already got the heat of jeep. Now, don't start worrying again, Lucy. Everything's going to be all right. Uh, that's just what you said that time that you broke them two ribs, remember? Oh, but that was different. We had an accident that day. Well, the way I feel now, I was going to have an accident myself. Come on, Lucy, brace up. Come on, hand me that costume. You mean this here one? Yeah, that's it. Come on, slip it over my head. Listen, child, how come such a pretty girl like you in this here dangerous business? How come you all don't get yourself a nice man and get married, huh? Now, look, Lucy, up to now, everything's been running swell. Let's don't start that again. Yes, ma'am, Miss Allen. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Here, tie that belt in the back. Well, hold still, honey. Hold <laughs> still. Well, nice little country girl outfit, huh? Miss Allen, you look as pretty as a picture. In fact, you always do. <laughs> well, I guess I'm ready. Hand me my watch, Lucy. Yes, ma'am. Mm, 11 o'clock. You ought to be ready to shoot this scene any minute now. Well, I'll be seeing you, Lucy. No, child, I hope so. <laughs> Come on, you're a big girl now. Snap out of yes, it. Yes, ma'am. But anyhow, I'm going to be praying to the good Lord to take care of you, honey. And I don't mean maybe. How's this for a little country girl about to run away from home? Oh, say, hello, I own. Oh, say, you look great. <laughs> How much time do we have? Well, we'll be ready very shortly. Well, now, let's see. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Well, now, look. You're doubling the leading lady. You're mm. supposed to run down alongside the railroad track there, and you're just trotting along, see? Yes, and then what? Well, the freight train comes along and overtakes you. And then? Well, a hobo is riding in a boxcar. He reaches out as the train goes by and scoops you up. I understand. He picks me up as the train comes That's by. That's right. Now, here's the point. If he happens to drop you or you slip out of his arm, you're going to fall very close to the wheel. That's exactly what we want to avoid. Yeah, that'd be bad, wouldn't it? Well, as a matter of fact, the fellow doesn't want to do the scene at all. He's afraid he will drop you. Now, what do you think about it, Ione? Well, of course, I, I don't want to go around being dropped under freight trains, but it seems to me that he could hold down all right. After all, it's not much different from being picked up by a man on horseback. I've done that hundreds of times, you know. Well, that's the way I see it. I believe it can be done pretty easily. Well, how fast will the train be going? Oh, about 20 miles an hour. Oh, well, in that case, I think it's worth a try. We'll give it a whirl once, and if it's too tough, we can make other plans. The only thing is, I own the train going even at that speed has quite a suction underneath the cars. 
So if you do fall, start rolling away from it as soon as you hit the ground. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Well, how about it? Are you ready? Sure, anytime. Okay, let me check. I think we're about all ready. <clears throat> oh, say, I own. I want you to talk with this fellow who's to pick you up. Oh, uh, Wilson? Yes? Uh, this is Miss Reed, the girl you're going to work with. Oh, yes, I know I own. We've worked together before. Yeah, I remember. Hiya, Jack. Oh, fine, thank you. Uh, now, look, I own. If something happens to you wrong, if I drop you, don't try to hold on. All clear, you see? Yeah, I understand. If I have to fall, I'll make a clean drop and start rolling. Yeah, that's it exactly. But I'll I'll do my best to hold you. Sure, I know you will. Uh, I'll go down then and get on the train. Best of luck, I own, and be careful. Thanks, Jack. I will. Now, uh, look, I own. You walk up the track to the marker there and wait for your cue. And then you start trotting along down the track. But when the train comes along, give it enough space to pass. <laughs> well, I hope so. Uh, okay, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Now watch it, everybody. This is the tank. Places. Okay. Signal the train. <whistles> All right, I own. Action. Roll them. It's tough for her to run in those high heel shoes. Yeah, especially in that gravel. It's going to be a good shot from the top of the train. Yeah, from the camera car, too. The train speed's about right. Yep. There's Wilson leaning out. He's getting ready. Look, the engine's passing her plenty close. She's running a little too close to the train. But it looks good in the camera. He's about to grab her. Here comes our shot. Now get this, man. He's reaching out. He's got her. Oh, oh, he can't hold her. He dropped her. The suction's pulling her under the train. Roll out of the way, I own. Roll out of the way. Look at that. Those wheels messed up by engine. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the courageous young lady who made that scene, whose job it is to brush death in making thrilling scenes for motion pictures. Miss Ione Reed, interviewed by Hal Styles. Well, Miss Reed, I'm still curious. How did you manage to get out of that situation? Well, if the train had been going much faster, I wouldn't have. But the suction wasn't quite strong enough to pull me under. I finally rolled out of the way. But at that, one of the trucks brushed my shoulder. That was certainly a narrow escape. Now, look, something went wrong there. Did you have to make that scene over again? Well, we would have, but Mr. Wilson was afraid to do it again. He didn't want to take the responsibility of dropping me under the train. Oh. Well, what finally happened? That is, how did they get the scene right? Oh, well, they just changed the story around a little bit and eliminated that scene. Instead of being picked up by the man, we did another scene and I just hopped on the train. Would you have made the scene over? <laughs> I suppose I would have. But the director didn't want to take the responsibility either. Tell me, I imagine you get pretty well paid for this dangerous work. I certainly don't do it for any other reason. Oh. Can you give us some indication? Well, I used to play leads in Western pictures, you know, but there's... More money in what I'm doing now. <laughs> that should give you some idea. It does. And your stunt work is in Weston's quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, a large part of it. I remember once on a Paramount picture called Under the Tonto Rim, I was doubling for Verna Hilly back in 1933. A wagon was supposed to turn over in a river and throw me out. There were a lot of... Just a moment, Miss Reed. Uh, this is the point in our program oh, where Oh, we... yeah, I remember. Let me do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll hear about the wagon scene in just a moment. But first... A word from our sponsor. All right now, Miss Reed, about that wagon. Well, according to the story, this covered wagon is going across the country. There are about 40 head of steers trailing along behind. The wagon comes to a river, and the people decide to risk a crossing, cattle and all. river isn't very swift, but it's pretty deep. We're all standing there on the bank of the river talking it over. The director, Henry Hathaway, is anxious to get the scene done. Well, we might as well try it. We'll never get it done standing here talking about it. How about it, Ione? I'm ready. Okay, now here's the shot. Now, Miss Reed, you and Tom are in the wagon. And the horses pull the wagon out into the middle of the river. Yeah. And there's where the wagon turns over. We'll trip it over with piano wire. I see. And then what happens? Well, in the meantime, all those cattle are swimming alongside the wagon. And so when you go into the river, you land right in the middle of it. Now, is that clear? Yes, sir. Well, now then, you're swimming around with all these cattle, see? You're trying to reach the bank. Well, do I finally reach it? Yeah, and Tom is supposed to save you and pull you out. Okay, let's try it. Well, all right, everybody, this is the shot. Places, everybody. Now keep those cattle lined up. Here we go. All set, Tom? Sure, I'm ready. Well, okay, I own. Get up there on the seat. All right. Camera, go ahead, Tom. All right, right out there in the middle, Tom. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Okay. Turn the wagon over, men. 
That's one way to get out of a river. That must have been quite a comical scene. Yes, it was, but it wasn't so funny at first when that big fella started after me. His horns were about this long. Mm, that is pretty long. I'd say about a yard or more. Now, look, Miss Reed, it's rather odd that an attractive girl like yourself would be in this sort of work. Don't you plan to quit someday and perhaps get married? <laughs> I thought we were supposed to talk about the stunt business. I guess that sets me straight. But in any event, and seriously, I want to thank you for coming here. We have all enjoyed your visits more than we can possibly say. And on behalf of our listeners, I extend to you an invitation to appear on this program again very soon. And I know that everyone joins me in hoping that you will. Thanks again, Miss Reed, and the best of luck. 